Go Tigers. Hey, good morning. God bless and go fish, everybody. Charlie Burr here. Hey, thank y'all for checking out my channel. If you like uh, live scope, seeing live scope action up close and personal in big East Texas slabs flying through the air, I think you're at the right place. At least that's that's what I'm believing in for today. I'm going to try and catch y'all some, some nice fish. Over here in East Texas, over here on Lake No Cantel. And before I go to fishing today, I've got to do I've got to do some maintenance on my equipment. My live scope has been been looking bad the last few trips. Uh, it's been everything from a cloudy screen, which a lot of that is attributed in the springtime to uh, pollen particles being suspended in the water, and that will clutter your screen up. I've I've seen that pollen gets so bad there was absolutely nothing you could do about it. Uh, it would be suspended right in the area that the fish were and it was just all but impossible to, to see fish but has got some other issues going on a little bit of a ghost tree that's a common problem but the main thing i want to do today i want to recalibrate my compass on the live scope and the bottom is not level it's it's stair step it's got um, the, the sensors i believe are out of whack so uh, see if we can not get that fixed up to clean that screen up. I like my stuff. I tell you, I like my stuff to work at its optimum. And um, certainly live scope and, and my boat, you know, uh, I want to keep everything running smoothly. Same way with my body. Uh, the older I get, these parts are uh, starting to wear out. And, uh, man, it's uh, got hair turning gray, turning loose. Uh, body parts just don't work like they used to. I have seen more doctors. Man, I, I went to the eye doctor, found out I, I've got glaucoma now. Um, went to the, uh, had a colonoscopy. I had the polyps. Guys, if you're over, I don't know what the age they recommend. I think it's around 40, but right now, let me just stop and say this. Um, if you're in your 40s, get that colonoscopy. I've lost a couple of friends because uh, men just don't like to go to the doctor, and they postponed it, didn't go, and and a couple of them are gone now. They got colon cancer. It could have been detected. I had the polyps. I, I go every five years. They take those polyps out, and uh, I live to fish another day. So do that for me. Take care, everybody. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been. If I could go a week without seeing a doctor, I would love it. But um, you know, I always like to give a little quick, quick talk, and this will be quick because I'm running late and the wind's picking up. We need to go catch fish and get this stuff done. But yeah, I want to take care of my my boat, my live scope, my body. We need to take care of that spirit man too. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, man, if, if you're not, um, if you're not taking care of, of your, of your spirit, man, your spirit, if you're not reading God's word, and I don't mean guys, you don't have to sit down and read a whole chapter. You don't have to, you don't have to read the Bible in, in a year. It'd be nice if you did. I've done it and I, man, I need to do it again. But, um, a daily diet, a daily diet of God's word. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God it says you know um, I got home yesterday I'd had a full day going to doctors and everything else I got home and Miss Pam had made oh, she had put one of these big roast in the crock pot that thing cooked all day she made some roast gravy and had some rolls with butter on it oh my gosh I was full as a tick on a Catahoula curd. I tell you, it was so good. But when, you know, when I came in and she said, are you ready to eat? Well, yes, yes. I've been thinking about that roast all day. What if I had said, oh, no, thank you, baby. No, thank you. I, I ate last week. You know, same way with God's word. Read God's word. Just because you read it last week, man, you need a daily diet of God's word. It'll do your spirit good. And then, talk to the Lord. No, you don't have to wear your knees, caps out, to pray till they're bloody, but um, wake up in the morning and praise the Lord. Thank Him for letting you see another day. Uh, I promise you there's 
there's people on this earth that would, I don't know how bad your life is. Sometimes I get on those pity parties, but it doesn't matter how bad we are. As they say, there's always, always somebody out there that would gladly change places with us. So thank the Lord. Thank Him for the day that He's given you. This is the day the Lord's made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm going to go fish in it here in just a minute because we're going to wrap this up. But, uh, yeah, we need to... Uh, we need to read God's Word. We need to pray, talk to Him. You know, even when we do those things, we can still, you know, our, our uh, we can still get cluttered up, or our screen can still get a little cloudy, kind of like that live scope. Sometimes, you know, it's an easy fix. Uh, we can just kind of uh, reset our moral compass. I, you know, I'm going to recalibrate this compass here in just a minute. You know, sometimes we can just kind of reset our moral compass. And then, you know, sometimes when uh, when we, we neglect, you know, our uh, fellowship, our relationship with the Lord, uh, you get away from Him, so to speak, and, and you, you get slack in your and you're reading and you're praying and, and just fellowshipping with the Lord. And uh, hey, this old world, uh, it's its real quick to bog you down. I know. And, you know, sometimes we can get so bogged down and caught up in this old world that uh, we start acting like everybody else. And we get those, uh, hey, it's kind of like, like those polyps I, got, I had. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to have a little minor surgery and get that stuff removed. You've got to get that sin out of your life, out of your heart. And uh, see the great physician. Let him clean you up. Let him do a little minor surgery on you and, and get, that, get that relationship back right with him. One more thing, guys. One more thing. I did something today that, that uh, this morning that that uh, I don't do often enough. And I always preach to y'all to encourage each other. The Bible says to encourage one another daily. And I'm good at encouraging you guys and other friends and all, but sometimes we don't encourage those that that mean the most to us. And I'm talking about my wife. I'm talking about Miss Pam. Uh, bless her heart. She's uh, She does, she has a full-time job that she's about to retire. But... Uh, she also, her hobby other than fishing is making cakes. She makes beautiful cakes, birthday cakes, wedding cakes on occasion. But uh, she was up late last night. Probably she may have been up till 1 o'clock this morning. I, I gave it up and went to bed. But she decorates those cakes. She works so hard. And she makes beautiful cakes, beautiful cakes. And people just ooh and ah she doesn't advertise one person sees her cakes at a party and she picks up more customers just from word of mouth but i looked at that cake that she had worked all night on and she had it boxed up ready to uh to, to deliver it this morning before work and i looked at that i took a picture of it for her and she left for work and I got to thinking, I, 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 I let her know, I always call her when I get to the lake. And when I got to the launch this morning, I texted her and I said, I'm here. And I thought about, I, did, I haven't encouraged her in forever. And I simply just a text. I said, did the people like your cake? Did they do an eye over it? She said, they love it. And I simply, guys, I just told her. It was beautiful, baby. I said, you do, your work is just unbelievable. I said, I'm so proud of you, and you make so many people happy with your birthday cakes. You bring so much joy to people through your cakes, and uh, I'm proud of you. And I, I'm i sure, I hope it encouraged her. I know it, it made me feel good just to encourage her. So let me challenge y'all to encourage somebody today the bible says do it every day so hey let's try to encourage one person every day anyway guys i'm ready to jump up here the wind is getting it's, i just can't make myself get out here early enough and uh and somebody says i
talk too slow, so I'm trying to talk faster today. Had a guy comment on my movie, and I like the comments here. Y'all, y'all, leave me those comments, good, bad, or indifferent. One, uh, one guy, he said, um, you, you need to talk faster. And I told him he just he just listens too fast. He, he needs to listen slower. I don't need to talk faster. You need to listen slower. But, uh, hey, it, it, I'm about to be 69. I'm just glad I can still put two words together. Anyway, let's get up here and uh, let's calibrate this compass. Let's see if we can dress up the screen, get us a good, crisp, clear picture, and uh, see if we can't get a two-pounder on screen for y'all. Hey, let's go fish. All right, guys, uh, first thing I'm going to do is, I think, calibrate this compass. Uh, go to menu. And I'm going to go to sonar setup. Click on that. Go down to installation. Click on that. Um... Calibrate compass. Now, I know this from past experience. When you uh, calibrate the compass, if if your transducer for this live scope is on your troll motor, then you have to turn the troll motor off. Uh, naturally, it has to be deployed because it needs to be in the water because. And mine's on the all aboard mount, but the mount is attached to, it might as well be on the uh, shaft of the troll motor. So for that reason, what you're going to do is deploy it, put it in the water, but turn that, that um, troll motor off. So I've got it powered off. All right, calibrate and begin. And when I hit begin, I need to go back here and turn the boat one and a half times in either direction tight circle uh just as fast as i can go around and uh it's going to calibrate the compass so here we go let's begin Alright, calibration status was a success and spin quality is 77%. Well, I don't want to get dizzy again, so we'll accept that and we'll see how it looks. And let's see here. Turn this pro motor back on. Idea, but I got some squirrely looking stuff here. Let's back this up. Let's see here. Let me get my. Let's change the depth. That's a little bit, a little bit better. Now that spot lock. I have got a very cluttered screen here. I'm, I am going to, I'm going to do a couple of things. Let me get my steering pod. Okay, let's go, let's just back out of this a minute. I want to run my forward range out about 40 feet there. And I don't know if y'all can see this. Let me change the depth one more time. See right here? See that uh, 
that drop. That ought to be a smooth line all the way across, and it's not. First thing I think I want to do is just clean up this gain a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm trying to get rid of that, so I'm not quite sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to go to menu, sonar setup, installation again, and let's try, let's try focus, focus. Look at that, look at that. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that. Uh, I, I like that. I like that. Looks like I have a smooth bottom once again. That's just lining up those, uh, that's lining up those, those sensors, those three sensors on the transducer. That's basically what it's doing, it's just, it's lining those back up. So let's back out of this. I like that. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what else did I want to look at? Let's go ahead and check the. Uh, let's check sonar setup. Noise reject. I usually lose, use that on low to medium. Uh, low is bringing in this ghost tree out here. I don't really. I'm going to back that off a little bit. TVG is off. Um, man, I even actually. I had thought about restoring the sonar storing the uh, sonar but I think I want to catch some fish before I do all that I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with this for now see how it looks I'm just happy to get that bottom smooth once again I've got also guys if you look look right up here let's see if I can get the camera up there Sun it's kind of bright um, you can see the wave, see the wave action? It's picking up the waves. The reason you're seeing that is I will tilt that transducer up one click. Uh, sometimes if I'm having issues with in shallow water and picking up a ghost tree, I'll click it up one time. So um, I just play with that. That's, that's why you're seeing, plus I like to watch those fish all the way to the surface, so it's pretty cool for that. Anyway, uh, we'll go with this. Um, shut this thing down and let's see he's over there to the stump field. I have a feeling those fish are going to be in the stumps. It's time for them. I'm, I'm sure they're pretty much all done spawning. So let's go catch some timber fish. All right, guys. I can't tell you how excited I am. I just dropped, dropped the uh, live scope in. And whew, I must love y'all because everything in me is wanting to go catch that fish. I see timber and I see fish. I haven't seen that since, gosh, early this year. The fish have been, you know, they've been doing the spawning thing. Then they were in open water. So I've been chasing chickens and I do what I have to do to catch fish. But this is what I love. Timber fishing. And they're here. So now I just got to figure out what they want and how they want it. I'm going to be fishing with my 12-foot uh, rear seat ACC. And Alan Taylor's Big Time Crappie Baits. This right here he made for me. It's a Charlie Chicken. I'm going to start off with Charlie Chicken. It's kind of a pink and chartreuse. Everybody loves chicken. Let's see if these fish like it. Drop down to that other fish. He wanted it. Yeah, I just made. I just messed around with that one fish too long. Come on up here. 
Uh, he's all right to start with. He's not that two pounder, but he wanted that Charlie chicken. We'll put him in there. Number one, 24 to go. And I know I'm tangled up at the tip. That's the uh, downside to braid. It does give you a lot of wrap on the end of your rod. Fish is just sitting there, isn't he? Uh, get out there. Let's see if he'll take a drive by. Here we go. Just, just missed him. He's good ways out there. A little better drop there. Boy, it came right over your head. wind but I'm just glad they're out here in the, in the stumps. See what he'll do this time. He's chasing it. There he is. I just kept taking it from him. That's a better fish here. Come on over here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, no! God! Oh! Jesus, what a good fish. Dang it. Oh man. Hey, that's part of it. It's part of it, guys. <laughs> well, you know, every trip, you gotta have, you know, you should have seen the one that got away. Oh my gosh, he was two pounds too. Mm, mm, mm. Oh well. Check my hook. I know it's good. But... Yep, he just wasn't hooked good. That happens sometimes when they're not real eager to bite. You saw how he just kind of wasn't in a big hurry to hit that bait. Oh, man, that's a good fish. Oh, God. That right there, right over here, that looks, they are sitting on a tree. See how they're kind of vertically stacked? I can tell you, and they're pretty good returns. That's a, that's a gang of white crappie right there. And let's see if we can get one to bite. One, two, three, four, about six or eight of them. I'll get one of them to bite. There'll be one hungry one. I love, love, love when they start acting like this. All right, fire away. See my jig approaching, fish departing. Back over here, jig. There we go. One of you guys right there. Come on. He's thinking. Following it. Ooh, oh, I, I want your buddy up there. He's bigger than you are. He's bigger than you are. I want him. I want that one right there. Oh man, he must be the lookout.
I'm going to do a little drop and stop. There he is. Stay on. That's a good fish right there. Dog gone. Oh my gosh. That's, oh, that's a big one. That is a big one. Don't get off. Don't get off, buddy. Come on back over here. He's under the boat. Come back over here. I don't know he sees wearing him out. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, ready? Here we go. Oh. <laughs> he hit it like he was supposed to. He said, now let's get it out here. He wasn't coming off. Number two. All right. Charlie Chick. When those fish uh, start showing interest in your in your jig, guys, don't let it just sit there. I have found that, you know, take that bait from him and just keep it keep it just out of reach. He knows uh, that's how his natural food acts. It stays just out of reach. And then he'll put the move on him. Sometimes you get to be the hammer. Sometimes you're the nail. Okay. Ooh, look next door. Look next door, would you? Looks like a apartment complex. Look at that. Is that one nice one or two little ones right there? That looks like a that looks like a behemoth. Get all lined up here and get it over. Now let's drop on down and see. See if he whoa a guy I dropped too hard. Oh god, he, he was on there for a second. Might have been that other fish that I saw moving. Hung on the tree. <clears throat> Come on, big one. Here he comes. Here he comes. God, got him. Look at him on the screen there. That was cool. That was cool. Oh! That was cool, buddy. You did just like you were supposed to. He uh, uh he uh came out from that fork and chased that Charlie chicken down, didn't he? Man, I mean that was that Charlie chicken but I'd like to see him a little bit more aggressive than that so let's go with uh, let's go with that gray that gray ghost if they like it just a little bit better yeah you saw that one coming after it and I missed him. I don't like the way he acted on that. I'm gonna put that silver chartreuse. 
on there. I'm telling you guys, when you find something they really like, it's like night and day. You can there's an obvious difference in the way they attack it. You see that one come up? He, he came up and and lifted. I thought I had him actually. Thumped it pretty hard. Not sure why they're acting this way. This is the uh, fun part for me, just figuring out what that fish wants. Got one looking there, but yeah, I'm hung on that tree. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I've got five colors that that I take with me. Charlie Chicken, Gray Ghost, Silver Chartreuse. And I've got two other colors that Alan makes that uh, that I like. One of them, one of them is Cinnamon Toast. I'm gonna try it. Try that Cinnamon Toast. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna put this. Uh, I call it. Uh, it's kind of a bluegrass color. We'll try it next. He did the same thing. He just came up and uh, he just kind of nibbled it. Do a drive by. How about that, guys? Not interested at all, is he? All right. I'm going to try one more color, and then I think it's just going to be all about presentation then. Well, Mr. Goldfish, catch one of these fish. Here we go. Or they'll just they won't, won't commit here comes one he run over there like he was going to be a man look at him good grief all right i've exhausted my colors so now either they are not in the biting mood I might try to hypnotize one. All right, guys, I, uh, I think I've put together a little bit of a pattern here. It took me a bit uh, to figure out which bait they wanted. And then once I got them to uh, start hitting, I couldn't I couldn't stick them uh, man I mean he drew some blood but uh, I don't think this is the one I just caught he was well over two and uh, show you what I'm catching them on and then I'm gonna show you dog no, he sliced me um, so it's a uh, big-time crappie jig of course but I've never used this one I thought, what the heck? It's a, uh, it's black and white. It's kind of wet and discolored right now. 
I don't know if you can really see that. But I did something extra too. I opened up that uh, fast snap and I put a little spinner in there. And that seemed to make a difference as well. So let me see if I can catch one. And what I'm having to do, guys, these fish, I would set the hook and I missed like four or five fish. Finally figured out what I had to do was not set the hook. Just, I've fished this braid so it's got, you know, no stretch to it at all. Lift the rod tip up. Just lift it up gradually. He will stick himself. If you try to set the hook, I missed him every time. Let's give it a try. He should be. There he is right there. He, just, he pulled a Houdini on me for a minute. Let's see what he's all about. Nothing the first time. I went right past him. Let's try him again. All right, I just picked up. I didn't set the hook. I just picked up. Oh my gosh. Oh, stay on, please. That is a monster. That is a monster here, guys. Come on, get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Here we go. Come on. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> I did not set the hook. I just picked up on it. He's a monster. Caught him on that little... See, it took two drops on him as well. All right. Moment of truth. Take up a little slack. Looks like he's right about here. right up against that tree and I just imagine that's where my jig is I see some movement I don't know where I'm at I'm watching hey, I'm on the tree I felt it hit here he comes here he comes come on buddy just pick it up see I just picked it up didn't set the hook he's not that big he's nice a little black crappie Black crappie like that dig too. What is that just sitting out there? That's a fish there. Just sitting out there watching the show. Oh, he hit it. Will he, will he come again? I didn't set the hook. He just he just kind of popped it. Oh, got you that time, buddy! <laughs> Ooh, come on over here. Not that big, but he was fun to catch. Just kind of sitting out there. Always keep your eyes open, guys. You never know. These fish are everywhere. I believe that's the one. That's the one. Here we go. God, I lost him. Oh no. I just hold my rod still when I lose him like that. 
All right, I'm gonna pick it up and drop again. He he went off radar just for a minute. That's a good fish. Come on, bite this time, please. There we go. That's perfect. Here he comes. There he is. I got him. Come on, don't get off. That's a good one. Mm. He's not a two pounder. Uh oh. Uh oh. As I like to say, guys, all good things must come to an end. 25, finally. It's been a good day. Um, got some good ones in there. I'll show them to y'all later. I'm gonna um, gonna break this stuff down, break these cameras down, and um, all right, guys. This started out kind of slow today, but it ended up with all that the law would allow. Had a great day. Some good quality fish. Once you crack the code, once you figure out the bait that they want, simmer down. Once you figure out the bait they want and how they want it don't be afraid to think outside the box just like today i got a color that they never never have really romped on but they they loved uh that black and uh, black and gray with a spinner blade added to it put that little willow leaf on there and made a big difference anyway it's time to head home god bless y'all go fish i'll catch you next time